but I think that more so than Americans do, I am very anti-illegal immigrants because that is a slap in the face to everybody like myself who came here, took about eight years to go through approval stages, my parents did, and we came here legally. So as an American citizen uh, who was not born here, but uh, again, I am very anti-illegal immigrant, and I think every single illegal immigrant should be thrown in this country. No, I'm not, not a major Donald Trump supporter, but Donald Trump never, ever says he's against immigrants. He's against illegal immigrants. So am I, and so should everybody who's level-headed. I have a couple more things I would like to discuss. Then yeah, I'll get off the quick, real quick, real quick. Go, go, go. Number two, Hillary Clinton. Nobody ever talks about this. There's only one of two choices. Either she's a liar or she's incompetent. She was the Secretary of State for six years. So what she's saying is that during this six years, she has never sent an, an email that, was, uh, that, 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 that had any kind of private or any kind of uh, uh, secretive uh, um, to, uh, secrets to it. That yes. She did not do her job. So either she did not do her job because you cannot tell me that the Secretary of State you never... Uh, send information or you never send emails to another secretary of state or another president. So either she's a liar or she's incompetent. So she can pick either one she wants. Uh, listen, Radu, I appreciate the call. Great to have you listening at WMAL in Washington, D.C. Again, I just wanted to point out to arrive at the conclusion. Notice he had a juxtaposition for us there at the end. Either she's lying or she's incompetent. Guess what? To arrive at that decision requires ahem, a little critical thinking. And we, we a critical thinking. What used to be common sense is not so common anymore. Critical thinking is in short supply. Again, is there a critical mass, a sufficient number of us in America that realizes what's at stake? 855-400-SAVAGE, that's the number, 855-400-7282. I am author and columnist Austin Hill. Glad to be sitting in, honored to sit in for Dr. Michael Savage. This is The Savage Nation. Join The Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. My Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com. It's the only company I trust to protect my wealth. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. Just moments ago, a caller here on The Savage Nation suggested that if it was you or if it was me that had engaged in Gross negligence at the State Department, why we'd be facing criminal charges. There wouldn't be a lot of debate. There wouldn't be people sending money to our campaign website and those kinds of things. But with Hillary Clinton, it's a different deal. And I'll tell you why. And this is this is why I was posing the question earlier. Are there still sufficient numbers of Americans who give a rat's behind about national security and realize just how dangerous this game is? Um, it's not an American news agency. It's the London Daily Mail out of the UK that has done the critical thinking and the scrutiny and reporting that what Mrs. Clinton is being investigated for were it to be the case that she was brought up on charges and found guilty in a court of law, it could land her a 10 year prison sentence. This is how severe this situation is. If you just joined us, this is the Savage Nation. I'm author and columnist Austin Hill. Honored to be sitting in for Dr. Michael Savage today. He's fine. Don't panic. He's good. He's taking some time off. He's traveling. He'll be back, if not Monday, then very early next week. And I'm honored here to uh, spend some time with you into the next hour. We'll get to more of your calls coming up. It's toll-free, as always, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Are there still enough of us in America with a pulse? And with synapses actually happening in our brain cells, is there still a sufficient number of us who care and realize what's at stake? We'll talk more about that, get to more of your calls on this. Oh, and in the midst of all this fiasco, guess what Hillary's talking about? Pot! Why, of course, what a great diversion. We'll talk about Hillary's pot diversion on the Savage Nation. Don't go away. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE. Savage. Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised.
And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of unprotected talk, borders, language, culture. And here he is, Michael Savage. Dr. Michael Savage out today. I am author and columnist Austin Hill. Glad to have you with us in the Savage Nation. Take down our number. It's 855-400-SAVAGE. 855-400-7282. Dr. Michael Savage out today. He returns on Monday, and I'm honored to be with you. Here's here's a question I would pose. Will pot... Will pot be Hillary Clinton's escape? Oh, I know. Pot, as such, is a... uh, it's a medicinal. It's just, you know, for the alleviation of pain, right? It's just mama's medicine. That's all it is. Pot is an excuse. I get it. It's an escape for a lot of um, emotional and psychological disorders. But will it be Hillary Clinton's escape from the, I guess, the conundrum she's got herself in, having violated federal law, or at least having given every appearance of violating federal law with this insane harboring of classified email data, national security data, no less, on private servers. Can she escape the wrath of those of us who are hopefully, Lord willing, God willing, waking up and realizing what a mess she and Barack Hussein Obama, peace be upon him, have made of our national security apparatus. Can she use pot as the escape? Now, here's why I ask. And I want to repeat some audio. We played this in the first hour here on the Savage Nation broadcast uh, as I, Austin Hill, sit in just for a few hours today uh, for Dr. Savage. But I want to repeat this. This is There's one courageous guy here in the news media. There's more. But here's one. His name is Brandon Ritterman. He is a local television news anchor reporter in the Denver, Colorado market with KUSA Television. Here's Brandon Ritterman. He gets this opportunity to interview Hillary Clinton. And forget the, uh, the puffball parade uh, love fest with Anderson Cooper and the CNN gang at the Democratic um, debate as such earlier in the week, Brandon Rittman actually asks a serious question of Mrs. Clinton. He paints the picture, gives a bit of a ramp up, 25, 30 seconds or so here, explaining what she did to his viewers, harboring uh, classified data on private email servers when she was the nation's top aficionado with diplomacy, our nation's top diplomat, the one entrusted to carry out foreign policy to ensure and to uphold national security and all the rest. Here's Brandon Rittman. He lays out the uh, the acts that she has committed, apparently, and then says, did it ever occur to you that maybe kind of sort of this could have been kind of reckless and dangerous? Listen to this again. Roll it, please. I'm not going to ask you a trustworthiness question about the email issue, um, but I do want to ask a judgment question. You used a a small Denver company called Platte River Networks to manage your private server. It appears now that data off of that server got backed up to a cloud server somewhere else without your knowledge or consent. Um, Platte River told me if it knew, and it's not in the business of asking, but if it knew that you were planning to send State Department type information through this system, this is not the system that they would have set you up with. You're the nation's top diplomat in that role. You got to know that you know what you're sending through communications is valuable to foreign intelligence. Why go with this system? Did any part of you think maybe this isn't a good idea? Did it ever kind of sort of a little bit, maybe just kind of, maybe possibly cross your mind that this could have been reckless? And I love his setup here. I'm not doing what the dominant national news media and the pollsters are doing, he seems to be saying. I'm not asking a trustworthy question. Gee, Mrs. Clinton, can we trust you? I'm asking you a judgment question. Oh, oh, thank you, Lord. We are so, so... So deficient with judgment, with discernment. I'm asking you a wisdom question is kind of what he's doing here. Could this have been kind of dangerous, Mrs. Clinton? Here's her meandering, I take responsibility and and it's everybody else's fault at the same time response. Listen to this again. Well, look, I've taken responsibility uh, for what I did. And... um, It was a mistake. The State Department allowed it uh, at the time, uh, and I've tried to be as transparent as possible. I'll be appearing before the Congress next week and answering a lot of questions uh, that they may have, although now it's clear that uh, this whole effort was set up uh, for political partisan purposes, not to try to get to any 
um, useful end. Um, but I, you know, I'll be in a position to respond, and uh, the American people can uh, listen and watch and uh, draw their own conclusions. Hmm. I've taken full responsibility. I've apologized. There's really nothing to see here. This is all just partisan politics. But I don't want to, you know, defer to politics. I've taken full responsibility, and ask me later. Okay. Now, in that same interview with this uh, courageous guy, Brandon Rittman, he actually dared to challenge her. Oh, my goodness. News journalists challenging would-be politicians. Oh, it's her feelings. We should ha- sound uh, 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 play a sound to, uh, st- to indicate a hurt feelings alert. I'm sure somebody, probably a lot of somebody's feelings got hurt when he challenged dear Mrs. Clinton on her stance towards medical marijuana and pot. Now, I don't know how inadvertent this was or how unintentional it was. I think this is all just, you know, get the liberal progressive vote. Get those Obama sycophants to go check the box for me, 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 me. I think that's the only objective here. But she kind of meandered into a very interesting uh, power to the state sort of conundrum here. Anyway, challenging Mrs. Clinton about uh, pot. Here was her response in Colorado. Listen to this. I, I really believe it's important that states like Colorado uh, lead the way so that we can learn what works and what doesn't work. And I would certainly not want uh, the federal government to uh, interfere with the legal uh, decision made by the people of Colorado and enforced by your elected officials as to how uh, you should be conducting this business that you have approved. Um, so, no, I want to give you uh, the space and I want other states to learn from you what works and what doesn't work. Oh, my good. Oh, wait, but notice the about face here. We're cons- we're concerned. Mrs. Clinton is concerned about federal intrusion into individual lives. Come on. Yeah. Well, if that's the case and if it's really about states rights and by the way, legally, this doesn't add up uh, arguably. And I, listen, I, I'm, I'm not interested in pot. I've never tried it. I, I, I understand there's an argument to make. People make the argument to say, well, it really does have a medicinal purpose. Okay, fine. But why are you so obsessed with it? I mean, really, with all that's going on in the country, all the national security crises that we're dealing with right here, right now, and you're motivated, your, your prime passion in life is to demand your pod rights. I mean, that's kind of, you know, those are some pretty weird priorities, I would say. But uh, my goodness, what she's now gotten herself into is a debate over the powers of the states. Some people call it states' rights. Constitutionally, states don't really have rights. They have certain powers. It's the uh, battle of the powers of the state versus the powers of the U.S. federal government. And she's siding with the states? Huh? Rutrow? I mean, what's going on here? This is the, and again, the liberal progressive Obama sycophants, they have not the critical thinking capacities to understand what's going on here. But my goodness, if the states, if we, we can't let the federal government intrude with the states. Well, what about Arizona's state law regarding, hello, illegal immigration? Barack Hussein Obama has sought to uh, undermine that at every turn. Mrs. Clinton, where dost thou stand on federal meddling with Arizona and its uh, law saying illegal immigration is illegal? I mean, I mean, seriously, we're going to uh, go down this road where we have to trust the individual states and local governments because the feds don't have it all figured out here. And arguably, one would say that the states, Colorado and Washington and other states around the country, even other local uh, municipalities around the country, California, uh, for sure, California blazed the trail on this one. Individual states and local governments, they are interfering with the federal government. They are, at the very least, you'd have to say, logically and legally speaking, they're at odds with federal law. Marijuana, its growing, its cultivation, its harvesting, its sale, its consumption, its transporting is by federal law still illegal. And yet individual local governments and individual state governments, sometimes through legislative processes, more often than not through ballot initiative, they have risen up and said, hey, we don't care. We're doing what we want. I, I, I wonder if, if Mrs. Clinton just wants to, you know, give give people their space, you know, in states where they didn't create an Obamacare insurance exchange. Oh, my goodness. We wouldn't want to impose Obamacare on people. Right, Hillary? There is not a logical consistency here. 
And uh, we live at a time in our nation where the critical